It's common in Thailand in the building when doing construction work in the monasteries to remind everyone that the, your real dwelling is not outside. It's inside. The qualities you develop in the mind. And so now that we're starting construction on some monk huts, it's good to keep that point in mind. On the one hand, we do develop a lot of good qualities as we work on projects together. And on the other, we have to remember that our real refuge and our real place of rest is inside. So you want to appreciate both. One of the first things you learn when you're doing construction work is you have to have a lot of patience. I noticed this years back we had a problem in an earlier construction project it required that the problem be solved very quickly. We had a very unfriendly inspector from the county. We had a couple of Americans working on the problem, and they complained the whole time how unfair it was that the inspector had required those changes and how difficult it was. And I kept thinking, back in town, this is not how they would do it. Everyone would be trying, at least to some extent, to lighten the load by not complaining, by seeing the humor in the situation or seeing something positive in the situation. Which is not to say that there's no disharmony in construction in Thailand, and there's plenty there too. But an important part of learning patience and endurance is learning how not to weigh yourself down unnecessarily. To look for the positive things, look for the easy things that are going on. Look for your strengths. And learn how to Wear your problems lightly. This is what a sense of humor is all about. If you learn how to make light of difficult things, you find that they're not so difficult. And because you're not weighing the mind down, you're a lot more ready and able to deal with the problems. Back when we were at Wat Dhamma did and we started work on the jetty, that spired monument on the hill, there was an old monk who, as soon as we started construction work, left the monastery, saying he didn't want to be around for construction work. And John Fuang's comment was, well, I don't have enough perfections yet, I'm going to have to stay and see this one through. So look at this as an opportunity to develop your perfections. Your determination, all the, all the hard-working perfections, determination, patience, truth. Persistence, these are the things that see you through. Then there are the qualities that work both ways for leading to success both inside and outside, leading to concentration within the mind and leading to success in whatever tasks you take on outside. It's a quality of the, the basis of success. There are four. There's desire. This is desire accompanied by the fabrications of exertion. Persistence accompanied by the fabrications of, exer of exertion. You find out that the fabrications of exertion actually have to do with persistence and effort. Then there's intent accompanied by the fabrications of exertion, and then there's using your powers of analysis, again accompanied by those fabrications. These are the things that lead to success. Desire is the first one, because you have to want to do something. For example, we're building this dwelling in the mind here. You have to see this is a good thing, something that you really want. I was talking today to someone who was saying that 
For a long time she had trouble getting her mind to settle down. Now that she's finding it easier, she's slacking off in her practice, getting complacent. When that happens, you have to keep reminding yourself how necessary it is to have a state of mind that can settle down, not only when conditions are good, but also when conditions are difficult, which means that you have to test your concentration in different situations. See how long you can maintain it. See how long you can protect it. Keep that bowl of oil balanced on your head so that not a, not a drop slips off. So the desire has to be motivated by a sense of heedfulness and a sense of pride in your skill, a sense of appreciation. That quality, they say, call it respect for concentration. The Buddha had to emphasize that twice. He talks about having respect for the triple training and then comes back again and says respect for concentration. And the concentration is already there in the triple training. But it's the part that people tend to overlook. You have to keep reminding yourself how really important it is, because when it's there, it's so easy to take it for granted, because it's just quiet. And sometimes it comes with more intensity. There can be a sense of rapture, refreshment, a sense of light in the body sometimes. But often it's simply accompanied by a very pleasant sense of fullness and ease. And the mind very quickly asks, well, what's next? This is where patience has to come in. This is where we move from the desire into the persistence. When it's not there, you've got to work on it. When it is there, you have to learn how to protect it and just keep with it, keep with it, keep with it. Patience is one of the qualities that's so underdeveloped in our modern society. We all want everything to be quick, quick, quick. We want to learn, to have, learn how to have patience quickly. And the important part about patience is that it takes time. And you have to be willing to take time with a sense of confidence that this project we're working on here getting the mind to settle down, getting a good place for the mind to stay. It's going to take time because the mind is a very complex phenomenon. Part of it is willing to settle down, and another part is not. This is where you need your negotiating powers, dealing with all the obstreperous voices inside, learning how to see through their tricks. Reward them when they're cooperative. All the strategies you need in order to get the mind to settle down. Then once it's settled down, then you have to stick with it. An image that Lumpu Kamdi would like to use to use is that getting the mind to stay settled is like being a hunter. You have to be both very still and very alert, and extremely patient, because the hunter never knows when the rabbit or whatever is going to show up. And if the hunter isn't still, it scares off the rabbit from far away. If the hunter isn't alert, the rabbit can go right under his nose and he won't notice it. And the patience there, of course, is being willing to stay there and wait for the rabbit because it may or may not come. It's certainly not going to come on schedule. And people are often very impatient once the mind gets settled down. They say, okay, well, now where's the insights? And the insights take some time to mature. And you can't guarantee whether they'll come tomorrow or the next day or next week or whenever. Actually, the opportunity for insight is always there. 
A lot of it has to come from your willingness to hold with the concentration, even when there are other distractions, even when there are other things you would like to think about. So that's your typical habit of wandering off the breath a little bit and then coming back, and then wandering off a little bit and then coming back. Get smoothed out so you really are with the breath all the time. And that's when the insights are going to come. So patience here is an important part of persistence. John Fleuring used to make a pun in Thai. He says it's a little something, but it's something you have to do continually. The word nit in Thai, spelled one way, means little, and in another way, nit as in nitcha, where the basis for the word anicca, something you have to do constantly. And it's that quality of consistency and constancy that's going to allow you to pierce the things that you ordinarily would get deflected by. To go right through them, not get deflected, and see what's lying behind them. Ubhaska Gee talks about layers of film in the mind, and you've got to pierce through those layers of film if you want to see something clearly, and that takes persistence and consistency. Which moves into the next quality, which is intent. You really want to pay a lot of attention to what you're doing. You don't want to just go through the motions. Or multitask while you're sitting here. You've got one task. That's to stay with the breath. Stay with the breath sensations in the body. And again, just as that quality of Consistency is going to make all the difference. It's helped by this quality of intentness that you really are paying attention. Because as I said, the opportunities for insight are there all the time. The mind is constantly fabricating things, constantly creating states of becoming. All the things that you read about in Dependent Core Rising are happening all the time. And you have to pay careful attention. You have to really look carefully if you're going to see these things. And finally, there's your ability to analyze what's going on, to clear away what's unimportant, look carefully at what is, to get a sense of cause and effect. The problem comes up and you want to be able to tease it out. Because after all, that's what understanding suffering and stress is all about. It is the big problem. The Buddhist approach is a problem-solving approach. You look for the cause, and then you attack the cause. That's what puts an end to the problem. If you just attack the surface, the problem stays and festers. So when an issue comes up in the mind, you want to sort things through and try to figure out, well, what's causing this? Try to change what you're doing and see what that does. If you're focusing in one way, try focusing on another. If you're looking at one level of the breath, maybe it's a good idea to look at another one. For all the talk we have about the breath energy in the body, I'm always mystified by people who just stay with the in and out breath and try to make the in and out breath do everything. Sometimes you have to take the opposite approach, which is to be with a subtler, subtler breath sensation in the body. Make yourself fully aware of those and allow the breath, the in and out breath, to find its own rhythm as you keep the rest of the body fully alert, fully relaxed. Think of all the breath channels opening up and then see what the in and out breath does. So lots of ways of playing around with the breath energy, and it's through the playing around that you get a sense of cause and effect. So 
So these are the qualities you need to develop this home in the mind, where you feel at ease and secure, and protected from all the winds of the world, all the rain of the world, the heat and the cold. Those fabrications of exertion, those are the ways that you deal with physical, verbal, mental fabrication. Physical fabrication, of course, is the breath. Verbal fabrication is the way you direct your thought to something and then evaluate it. And then mental is perception, the labels the mind applies, and the feelings that go along with whatever you're experiencing. And you want to learn how to adjust these. Adjusting feelings may seem the strangest of the group, but you work with the breath, you work the way you perceive things, you work with the way you think, and you're going to change the way you feel. There's also the fact that the body has lots of different feeling potentials. There are parts of the body that would give rise to a great sense of ease and rapture if you simply allowed them to have a little space. There are other parts of the body that, if you focused on them in the wrong way, could give you a lot of pain. And so you realize it's up to you to decide where you're going to focus and how you're going to perceive these potentials. And the feeling tones in the body are going to change. The feeling tones in the mind will change. So these are the things you need in order to develop that desire, that sense of patience and persistence. So you want to pay them really close attention, figure them out. And it's in this way that your house inside, or your hut inside, is going to succeed. It's actually going to get built. The roof will be watertight. Everything will fit nicely. and you have a shelter you can really depend on.